All right, Oilers fans. I know there's a lot of you that are probably upset right now, but the Oilers did play a good game. They just couldn't find a way to bury any pucks tonight, uh, which is a little unfortunate. The Canucks capitalized on their opportunities. Uh, An unfortunate net pull from Chris Knobloch when Corey Perry missed the net by about 10 feet with a clapper late in the third uh, led to the empty net goal for Vancouver. But, you know, the offense... You know, it didn't show up, but the Oilers as a team, I thought the effort was there. The second half of a back-to-back, I didn't think they played poorly. Um, Honestly, as long as McDavid gets healthy, I'm not too concerned right now. We'll let the Canucks have first place in the Pacific Division. I know there's a lot of us that would have loved first place in the Pacific, but honestly, that's just an extra accolade on the season as a whole. The Oilers have locked up second place in the Pacific. They've locked up home ice advantage. Now is the time to just get healthy, get ready for the playoffs, but let's jump into the postgame recap. If you're new to the channel, my name is Austin. Welcome in. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. Let's jump into it. First period, CC was back in the lineup and then Sam Carrick was in for Derek Ryan. Uh, Oilers power play early. Miller trip on DeHarnay. DeSmith robs dry settle on a one-timer. Nurse was then stopped on a screenshot from the point. Power play goes over one, but they had four shots on goal and the Oilers really came out flying in that first period. You could tell they really wanted to get an early jump, try and get an early lead. Unfortunately, they did not do that. Holloway with a terrific four check and shot on net. Brown was stopped twice in close. The shots were 7-1 Edmonton at the first commercial break. It was a terrific pace to start the game. And then the ref got in the way of Corey Perry on a board check. Not sure what the ref was doing on that play. Bouchard and Ekholm were stopped on good chances. Skinner with a miraculous save on a CC giveaway. And then he stops Myers. Canucks started to press after the Oilers controlled the first 15 minutes of the first period. Fogel couldn't uh, bury one into an open cage. He had a good look. And then Lafferty with about 16 seconds left in the period makes it 1-0. He comes in on that right wing, shoots it. Skinner kind of lost his uh, right post with his blocker. 1-0 Canucks at the end of one. The shot's 13 to 8 for the Oilers and the expected goals were 2.1 to 0.7 in favor of Edmonton. Now the Oilers, like I mentioned, they had 2.1 expected goals after the first period. I thought they had a terrific first period. They just couldn't beat DeSmith. And I had a feeling after the first, I was like, if they're not beating DeSmith with the amount of chances that they had, I didn't have a good feeling about the rest of the game. However, the Oilers, they still played strong hockey throughout. I thought they were pretty good defensively. They had some turnovers, some giveaways, some lapses in judgment. But again, second half of a back-to-back, the effort was there without Connor McDavid. It is worrying that they can't get any offense since that Vegas game. However, I'm not too concerned in terms of, you know, the effort that we've seen. This is nothing like that Dallas Stars game where they lost 5-0 and just completely gave up. The Oilers, you know, they kept pushing the entire game. So... Heading into the second period, another early Oilers power play. Uh, I wrote that they needed to convert. However, they did not. Bouchard had a bomb that was stopped by DeSmith. Oilers then got a penalty for too many men. Uh, It nullified the remaining 16 seconds of the power play. A good kill from Henrique. And then Fogel almost got a breakaway. Corey Perry almost banks one after coming out of the box. It was a good kill. Nuge then gets stopped point blank. Brock Besser stopped on a rush. And then Carrick and Zadorov kind of get into it along the boards after a hit. And then Hyman and Kulak were stopped on on good shots. Ekholm was then also stopped. Skinner made a good save on Garland, but then Suter makes it 2-0 on a deflection and in the uh, high slot area. Not too much Skinner can do on that one in my opinion. Uh, Canucks started to press a little bit. Oilers weren't managing the puck very well at this point in the second. Hallway is stopped on a rush play with Nurse. Canucks completely kind of took over the game physically in the second period. Um, and as you can see on the graphic on the screen, they out hit the Oilers 48-39 to in this game. Uh, Zadorov was kind of, you know, the one that was in skating a lot of the uh, physicality for Vancouver. Bouchard gets stopped. There was no rebound. Uh, need more traffic in front. Evander Kane with a tip in front. He scores to make it 2-1. Oilers gave them a lot of life. Uh, the Oilers had a lot of jump after that Evander Kane goal. Skinner stopped Garland, who almost gets behind the defense. And then DeHarnay stopped with four seconds left in the period. At the end of two, it was 2-1 Canucks. The shots were 24-22 in favor of the Oilers. The expected goals were 2.6 to 1.3 in favor of Edmonton. Again, the Oilers were still controlling this game. The Vancouver Canucks, you know, they had a couple opportunities. They made the most out of a tip option in front of the net from Suter um, to have the one goal lead heading to the third period. But the Oilers have been a good third period team, but unfortunately they just could not come back in this game. Heading into the third here, let's jump into it. Nuge was stopped early. McLeod was hit by Zadorov. Skinner with a save off of a turnover. Drysaddle and Hyman were stopped in close. Then Garland blocks a nurse shot. He was a little shaken up, but he was okay. He did keep playing. Uh, Canucks were really uh, trapped 
trapping the neutral zone. The Oilers are having a lot of trouble getting through that neutral zone. Um, you know, that's a that's a talk system thing. You know, the Canucks, they play very responsible defensively. They might get out, out shot a lot, but they, you know, in terms of the quality of shots, they don't give up a whole lot of high quality. And they're especially good at defending the rush. Hyman then had a good look stopped by DeSmith. Kane then strips Myers. He couldn't quite get a shot off. And then he was called for tripping. And I didn't really agree with that call on the replay. Yes, there was contact uh, with both shins. However, I just didn't really like the call on Evander Kane for the trip. Uh, Skinner makes a uh, numerous saves off a mad scramble in front. Brown had a great knockdown to clear the zone. It was a terrific kill for the Oilers. Holloway then gets stopped in close. And then Nuge grabs his own hand pass, but the ref blows the whistle anyways. I didn't really quite understand that. Ryan Nugent Hopkins, he gloved the puck forward. Drysaddle didn't want to touch it because obviously there was going to be a whistle in the Canucks zone. And then Ryan Nugent Hopkins skates in because Zadorov wasn't touching the puck either. He grabs it and then the ref gra- uh, stops the play anyways. It was a bit confusing. I didn't understand that, but you know, I'm not an official in the NHL, so what do I know? Dry Seidel then gets hauled down on a cut to the slot. There was no call. Nuge was stopped in front as Hyman got taken down by Zadorov. Now, Zadorov kind of threw the chicken wing. Uh, wasn't quite an elbow or anything like that, but it was interference, and I'm surprised that there was no call there. So that was two no calls in a row. Uh, I thought it should have been a penalty. Henrique then gets hooked with no call. Hughes literally, Quinn Hughes' stick was literally in Adam Henrique's like under his arm in his chest area. Hughes lets go of his stick. That's usually called 99 times out of 100. The ref did not call it. Um, There was no call there. The Oilers pulled Skinner. Corey Perry misses the net by about 10 feet on a clapper. The Oilers didn't get any of their big guns out with the net pulled. Vancouver comes down and pretty much immediately scores on the empty net. Uh, It was a Dakota Joshua. Makes it 3-1, and that was the final tonight. 3-1 Canucks. The shots were 33-27 in favor of the Oilers, and the expected goals were 3.65 to 1.75 in favor of Edmonton. Up next for the Oilers, it's against the San Jose Sharks, the last home game of the season for the Oilers on Monday at 7.30 p.m. Mountain Time. Um... You know, obviously the Oilers need Connor McDavid. It's it's worrying that, you know, there isn't a lot of depth scoring right now. I was feeling pretty good after that Vegas game because the depth scoring did show up. However, the last two games against Arizona and against Vancouver, the depth scoring has not showed up. Guys like Ryan Nugent Hopkins, Adam Henrique, Leon Dreisaitl, um, you know, Warren Fogle, Ryan McLeod. These guys have not been able to put the puck in the net. And you would hope that these guys that are playing top six minutes would be able to do that. Um, in terms of their overall play, I'm not overly concerned. I think they're still structured. They do do have their moments. Uh, Cody CC had a couple shifts in the first period where I was like, okay, what are we doing here? But overall, I didn't mind the Oilers game tonight. This was an unfortunate result because the effort was there. They had the chances. Casey to Smith just made more saves and the Oilers just didn't have the finishing talent to uh, try and, you know, find a way to win the game tonight. Um, I'm expecting a good game against San Jose on Monday. It is the last home game for the Oilers. I think they're going to put on a show for their crowd. We'll see if Connor McDavid draws into the lineup to try and get that 100th assist on the season. Uh, I Don't be surprised if he dresses up, gets that one assist, and then just goes to the showers for the night. We will see what happens. Um, that's pretty much it from me for the post-game recap. What did you think about the game tonight? Are you as lenient with the team as me? Is there any concerns uh, from you guys uh, heading into the playoffs here without Connor McDavid right now? Obviously, I think McDavid is going to play uh, once the playoffs start, but obviously, the uh, the you know it would be nice to have a bit of depth scoring show up right now. It's not for a lack of effort. I think the goals will start coming. They are due to break out, so we'll see what happens. If you liked this post-game recap, make sure you hit like. If you really liked it, make sure you hit subscribe. And of course, before you head to bed tonight, tell someone that you love them. I will be taking tomorrow off, so there will be no videos tomorrow. Sunday will be a day off for me, but I will be back Monday with a full breakdown of this weekend's games against the Canucks and the Arizona Coyotes. My thoughts about Connor McDavid's injury uh, and kind of you know getting ready for the playoffs. I'm excited to share a lot of information on Monday with you guys about the content that I will be creating during the playoffs. So keep an eye out for that. Um, And we'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much for your support. It means the world to me. Every time you tune in, every time you like the video, it just, I can't get enough of the, uh, the support. It means, it means so much. So thank you so much. I will see you on Monday. Take care everyone. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.